Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Kevin Young. I'm from Citrix. I work for uh, I work for Pro CloudStack project for almost five years now. Uh, today, I'm going to share with some of the details for the work I did recently in CloudStack. Uh, the work is about uh, refactoring uh, our legacy VM Sync implementation to a new uh, job-oriented uh, VM Sync solution. Uh, this is part of the, the work itself is part of the effort uh, to react the CloudStack uh, architecture, make it more uh, into a more loosely coupled way so that uh, can benefit for the future for CloudStack, uh, make CloudStack be more modularized and uh, uh, easier to scale and to involve. Uh, in today's session, I'm going to cover a few uh, items here. So the first, we will look at the sync problem itself. And then we'll discuss about the legacy solution and uh, its uh, design assumptions and some major design ideas of the legacy solution and also uh, some of the main pain points we've experienced in the past. Uh, for the new solution, I'll first go through about uh, some of the high-level principles that I have followed. Uh, and of course, the change details for the new way. At the last, I will uh, go through some of my ideas uh, that I thought may be useful in the future to improve uh, in this area. Uh, so let's talk about the sync problem itself. Sorry. Uh, so. What does the problem come from in the first place? Uh, to understand that question, we need to look into the VM lifecycle management uh, in CloudStack. Uh, when the VM is deploying in CloudStack, in its entire lifetime, the VM can ex may experience uh, a multiple lifecycle life uh, states along the way. From one lifecycle state to another one, you may experience uh, a noticeable transition period. Uh, so, uh, so for, for example, most of the CloudStack users should be very familiar with uh, VM state inside CloudStack, like start VM maybe in starting states, uh, running states, stopping states, stop states, etc. Uh, and people may notice that it takes a while uh, for the VM to go from one state to another. Those, we call this transition period. Uh, that's a typical, uh, that's the like a typical VM life cycle. Uh, in the meantime, CloudStack VM cannot run in the air. So it, uh, behind the scene, there was always, almost in every case, like for every running VMs, there will be associated with the underlying VM running in the hypervisor uh, uh, host. Uh, unfortunately for all the hypervisors, hosts themselves are autonomous systems by themselves. So they have their own VM lifecycle management as well. Uh, end users may not notice that, but the, DC, the data center administrators could be very familiar with those uh, hypervisor VMs. Like they can uh, notice that inside in the VMware vCenter, VM may be in pod on, pod off, or, or some other status. So uh, a very common question people may ask, uh, is that a possible that we can utilize the underlying hypervisor VM state uh, to be direct use into the cloud stack? Uh, the answer actually is, uh, is a no. The reason uh, lies between the fact that uh, we have different resource implications uh, inside cloud stack and, and within the hypervisor. So for example, uh, when we talk about VM in cloud stack, it usually means we have a hypervisor VM resource and VM has its uh, network environment, and VM also has its storage environment in, in the cloud. And furthermore, VM could, uh, the, we, we could also manage the state uh, like resource allocation in the guest OS, for, like, for example, the IP address. So, so it's, there was a gap between these two worlds. Uh, and that gap can create uh, that's the gap is the, very, uh, is the major reason that we have the sync problem. 
uh, uh, so CloudStack, as the manager of the cloud, it's it's its responsibility to bring things in sync. And when an out of sync situation happens, doesn't matter if it is from an inbound VM operation or it is from an out of band VM operation. So when I when I talk about inbound VM operation, it's majorly the activities issued from within CloudStack, uh, and that can cause the VM state to, to transit from one state to another. Uh, for the out-of-bound VM state, uh, operations, for some hypervisors like VMware, uh, those enterprise admins are very familiar with managed VM through vCenter, and they can, even the whole cloud is managed by CloudStack, but sometimes they may go uh, bypass that and do some changes through vCenter, and those uh, activities can, call, uh, can also cause VM state to be uh, transitioned from one to another. And that event to CloudStack, is, is, we call this uh, out-of-band uh, operations. So we have a, pro a sync problem to solve, and we do have one. Uh, the, the legacy VM sync implementation uh, has been uh, worked for a couple of years from now. Uh, the, the, it has basically one design assumption, and some of the uh, two I, I, I summarize as a two major design ideas for that for the legacy solution. Uh, the assumption is that by the time when we develop CloudStack, we usually uh, the solution is designed to only take care of uh, primarily for inbound VM operations, because at that situ at that time. CloudStack is usually work with Zen server hypervisor, and it manages host directory. All the operation uh, issued from CloudStack, that's the only uh, uh, ways that people can, can deal with. So, so that's the major design assumption. And based on that, uh, we developed the, the main idea is that uh, first is to have resource, hypervisor resource agent to participate into CloudStack VM lifecycle management. And, uh, and it, uh, the, the whole sync process begins with a full sync uh, at the beginning. Uh, basically, the full sync will help set up VM initial state uh, when host initially connect to management server. And later on, it will periodically pro perform a delta synchronization. Uh, so this, uh, the, the, these two ideas is, uh, formed our foundation for the legacy VM state uh, VM sync implement uh, solution. The solution itself works pretty well for majority of the cases, but we we did experience some of the problems in the past. Uh, the problems both lies between the from developer perspective and also from the operation perspective. Uh, from developer perspective, like, uh, perspective the, resource, the design, goal, the design uh, choice for letting a uh, resource agent to participate into VM lifecycle management has increased the complexity of the, uh, of the whole solution. So that uh, basically means when you develop a new hypervisor resource, the developer has to uh, take care of a few things, like maintain a in-memory cache in the agent side, and monitor inbound operations issued from CloudStack. And also, it, will have, it, is, it is the responsibility for this resource agent, resource agent to generate delta changes, delta report to management server. So this uh, is a lot of work to, to do uh, for a resource developer. The, the, we, have, we have another for them from when we to the operation, from that perspective, we have another issue. What I call this a full sync chain of actions. So the, we have a particular phase called full sync. When host initially connect to CloudStack, the host will set up initial sync point. So it will report all the current VM state to management server. And the, that report handling, it will be handled in an ad hoc way, like handled in place. Does not matter what, what time it is right now for CloudStack for handling other tasks, when a report comes in, the management server logic has to act right away in place. 
Uh, so, and if in some a large deployment for cloud stack, for example, some, some company use a very large host which can contains hundreds of VMs, and uh, when that uh, when uh, out of situation out of sync situation happens, we have a lot of VM maybe out of sync with cloud stack database, and that full sync process can trigger a chain of actions because cloud stack is going to bring up the state in sync and it will issue a lot of commands for, those, uh, for the host to take actions on. And that full sync process can sometimes can take a long time to finish. So our customers, uh, especially for large, of a customer have a large deployment, when they start and restart the management server, it will take a very long time uh, for CloudStack to sync the status to, in order to bring the host into upstate. So this become a very inconvenient, inconvenient experience for our customers. So, and that and that's also is the major, one of the major reasons we, uh, to drive this refracting work. Uh, the other things for, for the in-place sync process logic also requires developers to exhaustively list all the scenarios for any VM transitions at that time. So uh, it's also for the developers, it's hard to maintain the code and become a change in that area can cause a loss of regressions. The, uh, the third things about this uh, pain point we have experienced is that it is for, because the design assumption at before for the legacy solution is that to handle, only handle inbound, uh, inbound VM operations, any out of band changes are very hard to be incorporated into the whole process. And uh, these things uh, as a whole make a very tightly coupled situation. So that's the, uh, some of the major drawbacks we had with our, our legacy solution. Uh, for the new way, uh, I followed a few, for the new way of doing the sync, I followed a few uh, high level principles uh, for the design. First is to uh, decouple hypervised resource agent from VM lifecycle management. So which means hypervised resource agent only need to report raw power VM power state only. And those, agent resource, those uh, resource agents only need to carry on actions that is specific for that hypervisor. Uh, so does not need to understand the logic of cloud stack. Uh, the second principle is that we want to serialize VM operations. Uh, means jobs targeting on the same VM are serialized and executed in order. State transitions is handled within the context of the job. So uh, the, and all those things will be loosely coupled through a, a newly added in-memory messaging bus for that. So through that message bus facility, we grew VM state reports, uh, VM state management, and the VM, like for also VM HVA management uh, uh, together but in a loosely coupled way. For uh, the, to follow the thought process, uh, I, I, I kind of category into the system into three, uh, based on the interactions we have in the sync scenario. I categorize the whole uh, logic into three major pieces. Uh, I call it the first one, like called uh, sync event source, which is uh, the power state uh, manager to handle that. And uh, we have inbound uh, changes processing, which is usually associated with orchestration jobs, individual orchestration flows. Uh, and then we have out of bound uh, change processing, will be handled in uh, Visual Machine Manager. And all those components interactive through a uh, a shared in-memory bus. Uh, this is a typical, uh, the interaction flow begins with the resource agent periodically report, a uh, generate agent report. The report will be sent to the power state uh, sync manager. The, the main job for the job manager will just uh, detect the changes and publish the event into the message bus. And for the events that caused by in process, uh, like uh, inbound VM operations, 
the, those individual jobs were listening on the events from the message bus and, do, and, and take actions accordingly. And if there's no, uh, if the changes is caused from out of bound changes, the virtual machine manager will take, uh, will, will be, will take care of it. This is uh, some of the details for those uh, three major pieces. Uh, for uh, VM power state sync manager is responsible to manage power state of VMs and is responsible to generate change event and publish to the event bus, and that's all it does. It does not uh, have in-place logic to handle any, uh, to take actions. So this is one way of decouple things. For inbound state transition handling, the change notification only triggers the, uh, the wake up of the job. And uh, that is waiting for, for, that, for those events to happen. And so that the process can happen within the job context uh, to complete a state sync process. So in this way, we can uh, remove that central handling place we had before and make the code much more clean and easier to write. The out-of-bound changes handling, uh, the major for, uh, the, the, uh, for, for that part, we, the, the major task for that is we need to first know that it is out-of-bound out changes. And in, under this new way of doing things, out-of-bound changes can be detected easily by looking at whether or not there were existence of a pending uh, job working on VM. Uh, this following, uh, following a few couple slides shows the details of the changes. We have uh, the changes in the, at schema level uh, be because we have, now we're going to manage the power state also independently uh, uh, with the regular cloud stack VM state. So we have new fields in VM state instance table, uh, VM instance table, and to utilize the job facility, we have uh, to co accommodate with this sync, sync framework. We did a lot of improvement for the, our job management. We add a new uh, VM work job table, a new uh, sync job join map table, and some a new uh, sync job general table. For the new, uh, this the VM power state management is a new part to the system, so we add a new manager to that. Uh, it contains, the, but the whole power state sync contains two parts. One part is on the server side, on the management server, and the other part is on the resource, part, on, the, on the resource side. In the management server side, the, uh, the power state manager just uh, uh, it's do the change detection, basically initial a base point when host is connected, and then detection is based on that uh, and report, uh, based on report from resource agent. Uh, this, on the server side, this manager also uh, is responsible for to, to detect, uh, called, uh, I call it a missing VM detection. Because a VM in the previous known good state may be missing from the next roundup report. This, this is particularly to, uh, for the out, for to deal with out of bound changes because those things may uh, happen in scenarios when out of band VM, out of band VM uh, deletion happens. Uh, when for, for those large deployments, because these reports come every so often, uh, like for, for, a, for a deployment with tens of thousands of hosts, it's become a burden for management server to handle it. So we, have to need, we need to consider the, uh, have some performance consideration for that uh, situation as well. Uh, this, what we do is the, we, we base on the fact that most of the VM will stay at stationary state most of its lifetime. Like use a customer starting a VM and let it running uh, maybe 20, 24 by 7. So most of the time, VM actually in a stationary state uh, majority of, uh, in this majority of lifetime. And uh, because of that, the state from the agent should look almost like the same. So we do, uh, we do accounting for that. When the number of the consecutive same updates happens, exit a threshold, we will uh, kind of no need uh, ignore that and, uh, and so that we can save, we don't need to save that into the database and, and, and save the rights to the database. In the resource part, now it's become 
actually is uh, to have finished power state sync is become very easy. So we, we retire of the resource agent uh, uh, VM state cache, as I mentioned before, uh, new, because new management server sync logic uh, no longer needs resource to maintain uh, such cache. And uh, tracking of those state changes and perform data sync is not necessary for this resource anymore. So we take off uh, that uh, burden from resource developers. And I put the example for, uh, uh, for a resource agent to compose VM power state reports. Now if you look at the code, this is not a real code, but uh, if, from, they basically demonstrate the idea of that. Resource agent is basically become pretty easy. Just uh, look for the VMs in the host and gather the VM power state and put it into the report and that's it. And no need to do any complex stuff to understand the VM lifecycle in uh, CloudStack. For the inbound changes, uh, handling, the job uh, that is performing inbound changes is responsible to orchestrate in the whole process. And the target VM transition uh, uh, will be monitored through the message bus and, uh, and, and the completion determination can be decided through, a, I call this, uh, I, build, I added a new interface called predicate interface. Basically, uh, in the middle of the page shows some example for doing that. In this example, the, uh, the orchestration flow just submit a job uh, to carry on the VM operation and it will listen in to the event bus on the state like power state changes. You have a power state and job state changes and then take some actions on that. So this is, I call this uh, like within the context handling for the, for the state transition. For out of bound changes, uh, we provide uh, a rotation based facility so you can easily mark up the interest you, uh, you, you are uh, listening on to the, in the event bus through annotation. And uh, if we look at the logic, it's pretty easy, also become very cleaner. So you can just first make a determination of whether this is out of bound changes. And if it is, it's dispatch the handling uh, uh, with uh, a simple switch there. And if it's not out of bound changes, leave over, leave the things to the acquisition jobs. Uh, in order to make this happen, uh, we also, there was some work on the, in the supporting facilities. Uh, we first, I first introduced a message bus uh, for that, which is in-memory based. Uh, it supports hierarchical subscriber management and uh, providing an annotation based dispatching mechanism to, for the developers. And uh, we also uh, improved the job facility. We now, the one thing that I made is to, we now tie all system activities with associated job. Uh, the login system is also up, updated so that people can, to have the diagnosis to understand the system activity. So you, for example, you can do a, a search based on the high level uh, job ID and it will give you all the uh, activities happening in the system for that particular activity. The, for the job facility, we had the th three types of jobs, API jobs, which is uh, usually it's a, gives a running context to a synchronized API request. And worker job is, is to really carry on the uh, operation process and uh, each run will be serialized on the target VM. And so do jobs are basically give all the background tasks a job context so that like we have a unified job uh, inside for the whole system activities, for all the system activities. The, uh, this model is a very simple model actually, but it is a model shift at very low level. So it touches uh, a lot of code base. A lot, it touches all hypervised resource, all major orchestration flows, and, all, and also like uh, VM HVA management. So it's very hard to do unit test. And to, in order to get the uh, work into the mainline, I take an approach of doing called a dual state report. So basically, for the resource agent part, we'll keep the old way and also the new way uh, at the same time. 
So this will allow the overlapping of an old model for a new, uh, and, and together with the new model, to help us to do a, a, a seamless transition to the new, uh, new framework. But along the way, uh, and then we, we, I also made some compromise because to the same reason, the code base is so large, uh, I originally thought to use, uh, to make the whole thing a synchronized way, but it turned out it's, it's a too dramatic change. So I have to fall back to use synchronized inbound process for state transitions. And that also, uh, that this, this compromise creates some other issues. Uh, we need to do uh, handle star, uh, threat starvation because we, as I mentioned, we have three different types of jobs. If they are using the same thread pool, we have got a situation that some jobs, we have more jobs waiting for a few available resource in the pool to exit the resource, to exit the action. So that can create a, a thread starvation situation. So those things have to be handled. And also, the, because we have multiple job boundaries, then we need to handle result and exception. Uh, propagation across job boundaries. So those are the challenges we, we've been uh, faced and solved in the new way. Uh, the, for, for the future for this, uh, in this area, I'm thinking that uh, uh, to, it's primarily for the performance consideration. Uh, the reason to store power state uh, is for, it's mainly for change detection and also as a temporary store for inbound job to query information. So the storage persistence is not a mandatory requirement. We can basically do it in memory in the MySQL, but we cannot do it in the management server memory. The reason is that we have, a man we may, we have to deal with the clustering of management servers. So uh, the, uh, an improvement that I can think of is that we can use uh, DB memory, we can use MySQL memory-based uh, table to help scale and improve the performance in that area. And we also uh, think, I think we may need a general pluggable model to sync other types of information. Uh, immediate needs I see that could be a sync support for storage DIS. Uh, that, that would be nice to have a unified sync framework to deal with all sorts of uh, synchronization here. And that's pretty much about my uh, Yes. I might have missed it, but can you give me a definition of in band and out of band? Okay. The question is about uh, definition for in band and out of band. I think in band is is the, is the activities triggered from within Cloud Stack. For example, a user through Cloud Stack, uh, either admin UI or user a, or user UI to start, for example, starting a VM. All those transition actions taken from within the Cloud Stack is it's defined as an in-band operation. Out-of-band out uh, operation is that the act, the, those activities, is, the VM may be managed by Cloud Stack, but you can use an external man, manager tool. For example, a VM, v, in VMware case, you have vCenter. You can see the same VM that created by Cloud Stack. Some people can like, stop it from that. And that, that we think is an out-of-band operation. So the out-of-band operations then are basically just things that some external, yeah. some external piece of software will do to the virtual machine, not necessarily an application that's running on the virtual machine. It could be, uh, yeah, uh, not necessarily. Yes, it's. I, I would say not necessarily could be caused by an application running inside the VM, but could be. Uh, external decision made by the external manager. A very typical example is the DIS situation. Like, the, for example, we deploy, when we're using Cloud Stack to deploy VM on VMware cluster, and VMware has a sophisticated uh, way for doing the resource balancing, runtime balancing. They can move the VM around. Those, those decisions happen outside Cloud Stack. So that we generate, we, we need, Cloud Stack needs to support those uh, uh, to work better with those external managers well. <laughs>